Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another OET All Stars live event. I'm happy to have all of you here, and I hope that we'll have a very exciting and lovely session today. So, if you can hear me, please let me know where you're joining from. Uh, so, good to see uh, all of you joining from across the globe. So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are from. And uh, I'm just waiting for the stream to start. Um, right. So here we are. Please comment so that I can uh, make sure that you are able to follow me and uh, hear me, and uh, I can get started as soon as possible. Right. I see. Uh, just waiting for your comments. Hello, everybody. I see um, Rubaya, Kenneth, hello, Melissa, Nang, Niveda, Madhu. Uh, Nang is from Singapore. Hello, Nang. Kenneth, Maya Lopez. Nai from Philippines, Riaz from Afghanistan, hello Maria, Eva from Zimbabwe, have a good day. Right, right, right. Look nice from Australia, um, Ahmed from Kenya, good, good to see all of you joining for today's session. And um, today we'll be looking at strategies for successful information giving in OET's speaking subtest. So we've been um, looking at uh, various aspects of the clinical communication criteria across a, a couple of sessions and going into the nuances of uh, clinical communication. Um, Kay from Philippines, Chit, uh, lovely is from India, good to see that. Deep D. Roy, hello. Ahmed from Egypt. Um, this is uh, so good to see all of you preparing for OET and uh, many of you working uh, in these difficult times. So uh, we, we share our great appreciation for the great work. Dr. Muna from Libya, Korta Korta, Hello from India. Hi there. Um, so if you have not attended any of my previous sessions, my name is Milan Jacob, and I am an expert OET trainer with IRS Group. And uh, we have been imparting OET training for uh, candidates from across the globe. Hello, Smitha. Hello, Joanne. And hello, everybody. So. I would start with a few clinical settings um, and uh, let's see how you can improve uh, information giving in these uh, aspects. Thank you everyone. Again, Niveda from Coimbatore, Shehzad from Pakistan, Anusha from Pakistan again. Yeah, good to see many of you from our neighbor neighboring country, Zainab from Turkey, uh, Amira from London. Hello, Nija, good to see you. She's a physiotherapist from Pune. Uh, right, so now you have got a patient and a health professional a doctor here. Um, so her name is Tamina and she's visiting an orthopedician for her back problems. Hi, Kavya. Good to see you as well. So um, now I've got something that the doctor is telling her. Um, if you can read it, I'll show you how physiotherapy is going to help your lumbar disc prolapse. So this is what the uh, doctor is telling. Um, so I've got a few more patients with uh, their health professionals. 
She is Kabili and she has entered the third trimester of pregnancy and the gynecologist is explaining the reason for the discomfort she faces. Uh, let's see what is the explanation that he gives. So this is what the uh, doctor says. What you described is Braxton Hicks contractions. There's nothing to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it could be soothing for her. Now let's look at the third patient with the health professional and here it's a physiotherapist. So Keith's physiotherapist has just assessed his knee and is explaining his treatment plan. Let's see what the physiotherapist has to uh, tell Keith. I'll be starting with patellar mobilization. It should give you pain-free range of motion. Great. So you have seen the three um, explanations given by uh, the health professionals. I'll show it once more if you have not been able to read it. Here's the uh, first instance. Here is the second instance and the third one. Hello, everyone. Unfortunately, I'm not able to read all your comments, but please keep commenting. And there's a lot of uh, opportunities for you to share your answers as well coming up right in a few minutes time. But if you really enjoy this session, please make sure you share it with your friends who are preparing or colleagues who would like to prepare for OET and send your um, helping hand to them as well. Um, okay, so now I've got a question for you. The doctors, we saw two doctors and a physiotherapist, they were giving information to their patients. Can you identify what should have been established primarily? So this is the time for you to type in your comments to this question. You, you saw what they, they were telling the patients, but before that, can you think of what they should have done? Type in your comments and I look forward to seeing what your um, guess is. And says Rappo. That's great, of course. Um, hello, Rabin. So what should these professionals have done right before giving what they have uh, done? Madhu says more technical words were included. Rebecca says ask permission to explain. Um, establish rapport. I totally agree with all these things. Key says establish rapport. Eva says greetings. Now, introduce himself or herself. That's Zainab. Matthew says self-introduction as part of establishing rapport. Nick says assessment. Absolutely. Now, can you fine tune your thought process into the step just preceding that piece of information given? Not right from the beginning, but I'm not asking about rapport building and all those things, introductions. Right before these explanations were given, just before that, what could have been? So within the, the gambit of information giving, in once you have started information giving, what, what should have been done right before this? That's my precise question. But all your answers are right. Um, but please come back you know, to that that moment just before the these introductions, the uh, sorry, this uh, information given. Right before that, um, ask 
permission, Bino says ask permission for examination. Bong says ask the problem. Um, repo, yeah. Um, ask what happened to the patient, that's Matai Sumi. Akshaya Sani regarding their condition. Reshma asked the problems. Tarindu, don't use medical jargon. Um, lovely Kunchandi says, does, uh, okay, do they know about the condition? Absolutely right. That's precisely what I wanted. Uh, so, yeah, all the other answers are right, and all those things should have been done, but pretty early on. I'm, I'm talking about that moment when information giving has started. You are giving your explanation, and then before those examples I uh, had uh, given. Uh, Dinesh also says, ask what the patient knows. So that's precisely what we say, establishing initially what the patient already knows. This is very, very important. Um, yeah. So one of the aspects which we look at today will be this, um, establishing what the patient already knows, or yes, yes, or they've, whether they are familiar about their diagnosis. That's great. Now, think of your practice as a nurse or a doctor or any other health professional. Have you come across patients who know a lot about their condition? If you have, type in. If you can remember an example, please uh, type that as well. Patients who know a lot about their condition. They might have gone to Google doctor, we don't know, or, you know, they, they might have uh, had previous consultations with health professionals. Their GP might have explained things to them. They could be, you know, already a health professional themselves. So we can have a variety of uh, contexts. Uh, but I'd like to know whether you have experienced patients who already know pretty much about their condition. And um, perhaps you would have had a little bit of trouble handling them as well. Um, you know, they might have shown you that that kind of an attitude where I know it all, um, I've studied. Um, yes, 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 a lot, but still they need to know. Um, yeah, Sam says they Googled it. These days that's a big problem because, uh, you know, uh, Google might not give the right information. Uh, so that's interesting. How about uh, a little about their condition? Not a lot. Uh, Lovely says diabetes patients know, yeah, a lot about diabetes. Um, Farah says a doctor when become a patient knows a, a lot about their condition, absolutely. So doctors themselves will become patients and some of such doctors have, uh, you know, turned that experience into very insightful, um, events, written books about it, which we have covered in previous sessions. Dinesh says their knowledge should be appreciated, absolutely. Um, so earlier we have discussed that when we were thinking about understanding and incorporating the patient's perspective. So that's exactly what Dinesh is saying, appreciating their knowledge. Uh, quite often uh, health professionals might have a, a tendency to disregard their knowledge as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so across the other end, have you have you seen patients who know nothing at all about their condition? Rabba says a mother of a child with nephrotic syndrome, right? Yeah. So is that in the the first, second or third category where they know a lot, a little or nothing. Rabba, can you please explain which one it is? So yes, Madhu says a lot of patients 
who know nothing about their condition. So this is something that you you experience every now and then. So that's something which we should uh, you know really be aware of. And in the OEG's context, this is hugely important. So information giving can be tailored based on what the patient already knows. So your information giving should not be the same thing for everyone. If they know a lot and uh, they know the right information, then you don't have to perhaps uh, you know start from the scratch. Uh, you could uh, use that as a, a guiding uh, point for you to to give further information. So this is precisely what you should be focusing on. Right. So I had shown you a couple of. Um, examples soon it'll say something very interesting today i met an anxiety case knowing a lot about it that's something that you experience a lot so perhaps it could be really helpful um rabba says the mother knows a lot about the condition of person yes and these days more and more people patients have greater knowledge of uh, their condition or their family's condition so that's something really uh, good so now I want you to um, think of what could have come there as part of establishing their previous knowledge, what the patient already knows. Think of something that you would have asked this patient right before telling this, giving this piece of information. Think what you would have asked, frame your question and type and comment in the chat box right now. So here we have uh, an orthopedician explaining how physiotherapy is going to help her lumbar disc prolapse. Think what could have been asked to establish prior knowledge. Said says, how much do you know about physiotherapy? It can help your condition. Hmm. Um, so it's like, how much do you know? Um, physio okay. So it's uh, the, the kind of impact that physiotherapy has, whether you are aware of it or not, perhaps, right? Mother says, do you have any idea of how physiotherapy he'll, will help with your condition? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Nobu, I didn't get you. No race, it's okay. We have got more time. Uh, Sunil says, what is your opinion about what you're going through? Mm. Atira Vijayan says, how much do you think, do you know about the condition? Great. Uh, so I've got some examples for you um, but I'll also read the comments that you're typing in mm -hmm. uh, Terindo says I suppose you have an idea about your condition lumbar disc prolapse all right uh, I would suggest uh, reframing that question into a, a bit more open question. This looks a little bit like a leading question, which we should avoid that into, but thank you for that answer. Niveta, have you ever heard about physiotherapy? Good. Zainab, can you tell me what you do? Uh, sorry. Uh, what you do about your disease and effect of physiotherapy as a treatment, please. Uh, Edinger says, how is your problem? Let's know about it, okay. Have you ever come across physiotherapy and its importance, Dinesh, I think? Right. Um, let me know what you know regarding your condition and treatment. Yeah. Uh, 
Lovely is asking about the patient's profession, okay. Perhaps uh, the connection uh, or the, the reason relating uh, the prolapse to the profession. And that's what I suppose it is. Um, Kota Kota says, let me know what you know regarding uh, the physiotherapy as a treatment, I think. Amira, do you have any idea how physiotherapy would help you? Mm. Have you consulted with the physiotherapist before? Darlene, thank you. Um, Lupna, do you hear about lumbar disc prolapse? Oh, I guess it's, have you heard about lumbar disc prolapse? All right. Reshma, do you have any idea that physio can give you relief? Vinita, do you have any idea about physiotherapy? Right, so I've got a, a number of good answers, great answers as well. So, uh, uh, so the example I have here for you is like, it seems that you have a condition that's called a disc prolapse. Have you heard of this before? For which she says, uh, no, not really doctor. Uh, and the doctor says, no worries. It's caused by a rupture in the disc and some physiotherapy will be helpful. I'll show you how physiotherapy is going to help your lumbar disc prolapse. So a little bit of, um, you know, finding, establishing prior knowledge. And since the patient has no prior knowledge, the doctor is uh, explaining a little bit about it. You could even explain it further more. I just used a brief example for you to understand the concept. Um, so if you remember, we had uh, this patient uh, in into her third trimester having Braxton Hicks contractions. And the, the doctor says what you described is Braxton Hicks contra contractions. There's nothing to worry about. So what would you ask prior to that to establish her previous knowledge of the condition? I'm sorry, I, I have not been able to read all your comments, but please answer for this question. Your question or your statement to assess the prior knowledge of this young lady into her third trimester of pregnancy, going through a Braxton Hicks contractions. Please send in your comments. I love reading through a variety of your comments and it's sometimes insightful of um, insightful to know how much of preparation you have done, which is pretty interesting. So this is interesting because health professionals might assume that patients sometimes know everything or no nothing so you have a, a range of uh, different options but primarily um, i think uh, you know more patients might not know as much as we think though it depends on where you practice the kind of setting you practice and a lot of other uh, aspects okay so this is interesting um niveta is asking have you come across Braxton Hicks contraction. That's good. Do you find it difficult to type Braxton Hicks contractions? Just use an abbreviation BHC for, for now. Not officially though. Rabba says you are in the third trimester of gestation, so it, it's normal to feel like that. Sunil, have you ever felt anything similar before? Could you share your views about this pain? Um, Cindy is asking, is this your first pregnancy? Yes. Can you tell me some concerns that make you uncomfortable in your pregnancy? That's Darlene. Uh, Lovely is asking, at what time you feel this contraction? At bedtime or doing some work? OK. Ah, right, right. OK. That's interesting. Uh, so I've got an example for you. Uh, 
Madhu says, I can understand what you explain. With your symptoms, I came to a conclusion that it's Braxton Hicks contractions. Have you heard that name before? Right. So again, we have a patient who doesn't know much. Julie Ramos says, can you please describe me regarding about your present condition? Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's more of information gathering than into giving. Um, Jewelry, so the question I'm asking is slightly different. Uh, okay, and Kota Kota says, do you have any idea what uh, are you going through, like regarding present condition of yours? Okay, how could you describe your contraction, Amira? Right. So this is the example I have for you. Uh, so the, the gynecologist is asking, do you have any idea about why you're experiencing this sort of cramping? And she says, absolutely not. It's scary as well. Uh, so the doctor says, what you described is Braxton Hicks contractions. There's nothing to worry about it. It's a false labor. Your body is preparing for the real one later. So he could even give more ex explanations um, about the the condition because the patient doesn't have prior knowledge. So typically it's a painless contraction that lasts for a short uh, duration and all those things can be explained. Let's now go to Keith, our third patient with the physiotherapist. So he has been telling that he's going to start with patellar mobilization uh, which will make it better, so the, the kneecap. So what would you ask? What should the physiotherapist have asked before uh, giving this piece of information? Type in your comments now. This activity looks very interesting to me because quite often this is the missing link of information giving. Sometimes you, you forget to or ignore the fact that prior in information should have been established. So this is an amazing part of uh, information uh, giving, which uh, sometimes overlooked by a lot of OET candidates. Um, but it's, this should give you a, a great uh, head start into it, a jump start. Okay, so uh, let me see. Let me try to read your comments. Bring on your comments. I would like to know what you would ask. Now we have done two, two examples. Uh, Jueli, would it be okay? if I'll make some physical assessment with your knees. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Diane says, I totally understand your concern, but you'll be just fine since the, that's for the previous one, sorry. Um, Niveta says, do you have any idea about patella mobilization? Do you have any idea about patellar mobilization? So the, the patient will say if they know what it is. Uh, do you feel pain while moving your knees? Ben C. Prabha, good. Arthira is asking, are you ready to do some sort of exercises? Yes. Uh, Cynthia, do you have any idea of what patellar mobilization means? Absolutely. So that's not just establishing prior knowledge, but it's also demystifying the jargon, the technical language, which also should be done. And perhaps it could be done together. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, Madhu is asking, have, have, you, have you ever preceded with physiotherapy regimen before? I guess it's like, have you ever done any physiotherapy? Um, Amira, well, to recap this, 
the steps we will follow to control your pain and improve the moment. Tarendu says the pain you're experiencing is due to the small bone over the knee called the patella. Do you have any idea about it, right? Are you feeling any pain in your legs, Selva? Um, Kotukota says about pain duration and intensity aggravating factors. So, uh, okay, so I guess what you mean is that um, establish knowledge about those things, or I'm not sure. It shouldn't be information gathering. We are looking at information giving precisely, but establishing prior knowledge at the onset, at the beginning. Cynthia is asking, have you heard of that before? Good. Uh, do you have any concerns before I proceed with mobilization, including pain, Madhu? Right. Uh, so I've got an example for you. Um, the physiotherapist is asking, tell me what you know about why we are starting with the physiotherapy. And, uh, oh, okay. So Keith, the patient says, I was wondering if it were too early after the surgery. Mm. And the physiotherapist says, it's a valid concern and most people would think that they require absolute rest. However, I'll be starting with patellar mobilization. It should give you a pain-free range of motion. Let me make it simple. I'll slowly move your kneecap so that it doesn't get stiff. Uh, so here it's not just prior information. There's a, 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 a trust deficit. The patient has just had a surgery and he thinks that it's too early. So that is being resolved as well. Um, if I miss some of your comments, I'm sorry about it. I have not been able to follow some of the uh, latest ones. But Niju says, do you feel any pain during knee movements? Great. And she's a physiotherapist herself, so she knows it better, I guess. Hussein says, where is pain and when it started? Hussein, that's more something that should go much earlier when we are gathering information, not giving information. OK. But thanks for your answers. Thanks, everyone, for the, the answers and the quick uh, response. So um, along with establishing prior knowledge, there are a few more things which you could uh, perhaps uh, use. So you may find out how much of the information they would appreciate. Um, some patients might not welcome a lot of information. Uh, so that is, again, something which you can try to establish. So can you think of a question to um, ask your patients or find out how much of information they would appreciate? Give it a try. It's a lot of typing today. And uh, I'm sure some of you are preparing for the computer-based version of OET. So it's good to have a lot of typing. Right. I want you to frame a question uh, to find out how much of information they would appreciate. This is um, something additional. Perhaps you can use it. Right. So at your profession, at work, do you do this? Do you ask? Do you um, probe into? The kind, the, the amount of information that a patient would appreciate, they think they need. And remember, in certain settings like breaking bad news, this is almost a necessity. Not every patient would appreciate receiving the bad news themselves. So that's why sometimes you might have a, a family meeting or the patient might say that they're not ready for a lot of information. Side says, how much would you like to know about your problem? Yes. Yes. So now remember, as I've just mentioned, it could be breaking bad news or um, disclosing terminal illnesses 
um, things which could have a, a, a bad impact, perhaps, a, a poor prognosis. Okay, so now Adra says, how keen are you to know about your condition, right? Shisoba says, would you mind if I go into the details? Yes, right. And something that goes along with it is um, you could ask if they require any additional information like the etiology or the prognosis. Um, so comment on that as well. Questions to ask this as well if, if they require any additional information. Medication maybe. Uh, Zainab says, uh, what do you want to know about your current situation? Madhu says, do you like to know all the information, all the important information like treatment options? Fantastic. Bansi Prabha, do you want me to explain the present situation more? Omar, how much medical information are you comfortable with? Hello, Omar, good to see you. Taha, would you like to know complete information about your illness or just an overview? It's also a brilliant, brilliant way of uh, finding about the kind of information, the extent of information, the amount of information that patients think they require or they, they are ready for, uh, ready to accept at that particular point of time because receiving information as a patient might not be something that they enjoy. They might have their own concerns, anxieties and stress. Uh, if you don't mind, could you please tell me your willingness to hear uh, here in detail regarding of it, okay. Um, I'm just ignoring some of the minor grammatical mistakes because the comments keep pouring in. Rad, I can see that you do not know a lot about your condition and I'm ready to explain all what you need to know about if you want to. That's also a good way of asking uh, for the range that is uh, accepted. Atire is asking, what do you want me to explain? Good. So um, now we're moving on to another aspect, uh, which is uh, a common mistake that a lot of candidates make. In OET, uh, Manju, would you like to know more about your condition? OK. So I want you to identify a common mistake that perhaps you or others might make while giving information. Um, now, you would comment uh, on a, a variety of uh, common mistakes. I do accept all of them. But I'll be pointing to a particular mistake that I have in my mind, which I think is a major mistake and uh, something that's quite often overlooked by OET candidates. Uh, especially uh, the candidates I train or we train at IRS group. Um, think of the mistakes that could be made. When you're giving information, information giving can be stressful. So, and perhaps it could be somewhere in the middle of a role play, not sure towards the end perhaps. So I, Zainab says using a lot of medical terms, yes. Um, so we have discussed that previously, how to avoid technical jargon and use lay language. Darlene giving too much information without confirmation from the patient if they, if they understand it. Thank you, Darlene. Medical jargon veil, yes. She's so by information can be overwhelmed, overwhelming, yeah. Overload of information. Uh, that's something which I would highlight. Thank you. Um, using jargon, Niveda, Dain. Can you tell me what is your knowledge regarding your condition? I think it's for the previous um, question. Lubna says, not explaining in a clear way. Of course, that is a problem. Um, and a lot of patients don't really understand what the health professional has just explained. So that's why we have other techniques which we have discussed previously, like uh, checking 
And we'll also be uh, looking at those things later as well, like chunking and checking and a lot of things. Um, gender change, Manchu, okay. Not being tactful, Amira. Bensi not listening to the interlocutor statement and rushing to complete those tasks provided. That's a major problem. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, Rad says interrupting the patient. Uh, signposting. That's Shisoba. Okay, I don't get the context though, but yeah, not having a signposting could be a problem. Start giving communication without establishing what the patient knows about the illness, not being empathetic towards the patient's condition, Darlene. I totally agree with all of you, but um, I'll tell you what uh, is an important aspect that I want to highlight today. So the common mistake that I want to highlight today is continuously giving information to the patient or carer. Right. Um, I see more comments coming, but I'll, I'll come back to it. Um, yes, I see Omar, tense problems. Uh, Jerome, audience, not knowing the audience, memorizing few sentences. Javi, too much information, brilliant, without pause. Javi, I love, excellent answer. Um, so this is a big problem. So how do you correct it? What can you do not to continuously give information to the patient or the carer? I've seen a lot of candidates do this. So I would suggest pay attention to this aspect of your OET speaking. Information giving just doesn't have to be overloading, overwhelming your patient. Mm. Right. So how can you rectify this? Timing, yeah, timing is a, a factor because, you know, you might think the time is going to be up and you have got a few more points to be completed. So that's going to be really stressful and a lot of candidates might um, panic. Not confident, Diane, yes, not involving the patient. We need the Anish, yes, I, I agree. So I've got something like an infograph so the common mistake looks like this a train of information 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 tim that's a very good answer that you have typed pause in a while then ask if he or she is following what you are saying absolutely uh, amira says the same thing by confirming their understanding after every single information so this is what i want you to do now this looks like um, a complicated graphic, but it's not. See, after some pieces of information, there is a pause. And you have, you pause and invite the patient to respond. Further information, again, pause, response from the patient. Uh, so this is an ideal way of giving information. Remember, have you ever done this? Information, 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 and uh, you know your patient just sits there overwhelmed under a pile of information, which is not an ideal situation. So remember to pause, invite the patient's response, or they might respond naturally when you pause as well. You can elicit their response with your body language, with your um, you know um, inviting verbal and non-verbal cues and they would respond if they if they understand they are, they would say that if they have um, questions they would ask that uh manju is asking if uh, you can ask whether the patient understood what we can we have discussed yes absolutely manju you can do that uh, speak naturally jerome absolutely so this i think is something which i want you to think of when you prepare for your OT speaking when you take the exam or when you're training. This is often overlooked by a lot of trainers as well, I suppose. Now, this is a question that I have uh, been asked. 
Does allowing the patient to respond affect the information giving and distract you from the task? Kota Kota, yes, you can ask them if they are following what you are saying uh, or you want uh, them, you want to repeat, they want you to repeat. Um, Manju, it depends on how you ask. Are you getting my point? Do you have any doubts regarding this? In some instances, it would be even better to ask them to repeat back rather than asking, does it make sense or do you get my point? Because it could be a little bit closed. Um, yeah, otherwise nothing is wrong with the question in itself. Um, Said says no. It, it doesn't distract. It helps you to consolidate information giving. Very good point. Uh, no, no, no. So that's a good, okay. More knows, Niveta says maybe, right. So this is a question that have been asked and let me tell you it shouldn't. It doesn't have to, all right. The patient's response is valuable for you. It helps you to determine the pace of the interview. It, it should help you to check the patient's understanding and it guides the next steps of information giving. So their response is something that's going to help you. It's going to guide you in the next stages of the information giving. So this that's helpful for you, the pause and their response. However, make sure it, it happens organically. It, you, you don't have to like pause and then wait for the response. It should happen absolutely naturally. Uh, being naturally something which I would request all OET candidates to focus on because quite often when you when you think of OET speaking, you forget that what is being replicated at the test is something which you should be doing naturally, typically at workplace. So you don't have to have an element of being artificial in your speaking. Speak naturally, but all these tips should help you to do that, to be more natural, to be more uh, confident in your speaking. I hope uh, it helps you. So finally, I've got a role play card for you. Um, I, I want to wrap up with a revision of what we have discussed and I want to test how much you have improved today. So I've highlighted the third bullet point where you have to discuss your findings. So it's about diabetes and hypertension uncontrolled. That's your findings. So you should discuss your findings that may explain the the physical fatigue. So this patient has had fatigue. And prior to that, I want you to establish what the patient knows about it, about the condition. It could be about the physical fatigue, but rather a little bit more about the, the precise findings, which are diabetes and uh, hypertension, which are uncontrolled. So perhaps the patient uh, must be uh, diabetic. Mm, yeah, yes, that's what the background says. So type in, what would you ask at the start of giving information for the third bullet point? Discuss your findings. How will you establish how much this patient already knows about their uh, diabetes and hypertension and these conditions be being uncontrolled? because of COVID-19, as is uh, mentioned in the background information of this role play card. Your questions, please. Your comments. Remember, we have been discussing a lot and you have been commenting, but when it comes to uh, role play, it might be a little bit tricky because for a lot of candidates, now I'm not telling everyone, for a lot of candidates, the, the first instinct is to start 
giving information, bombarding patients with information, overloading them. So checking the prior knowledge, establishing what they already know about the condition is very important. Nisha is asking, do you experience excessive thirst? Right. So that could be an indicator of uh, the worsening situation, right? I see some of you commenting, but yes. Think of what you would ask. So for candidates who struggle with speaking, who are unable to speak a lot, this is something that will help you to speak more. Tim says, so as you know, Jacob, we have completed checking your vital signs and some basic tests. Are you ready for me to tell you what we have found out? OK, but a little bit more, Tim, I want you to think of what they know. Would you please tell me about uh, control of your diabetes and blood pressure, tahiasine? OK, uh, right. Uh, you're welcome, Vinita. Amira, may you allow me to explain what is going on with your current situation? I appreciate asking that, Amira, but how will you establish their prior knowledge? Chanagauda says, would you mind telling me about your uncontrolled diabetes and hypertension? Okay, but does the patient know that it is uncontrolled? It has been uncontrolled. Uh, Nisha, do you go uh, frequent urination at night? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, remember, we are we are about to give information. The information giving is about to start. So this is the step that kickstarts information giving. Say now, can you share your information with me about? Diabetes and hypertension. Could you tell me more about your sugar control, whale? Well, Niveda, let, let us discuss about your findings. About, okay, would it be okay? Right. Could you tell me what you know about blood pressure and diabetes mellitus? Arokia, Uma, good. Um, if they know about what uh, the condition itself is, yes. That's helpful because uh, some patients, in spite of having been diabetic for a long uh, period of time, might not really know what it is. Sebi, do you have any idea about why you're experiencing lethargy? That's good, Omar. Sometimes underlying medical issues. Oh, sorry. Um, sometimes underlying medical issues can cause symptoms that you're having. If they're not under control, are you aware of such things? Yes, Omar, they didn't do. Um, please tell me, have you heard about a condition called diabetes and high blood pressure, right? Cynthia, could you please tell me how you have been taking care of your condition in the season of COVID? That's pretty remarkable because this is a role play where the patient has not been able to manage these conditions due to COVID-19, the pandemic. Manju, I think you are well. You're well familiar, familiarize it. Okay, familiar with your condition, even though do you feel any discomfort associated with your health condition? Um, it's a bit confusing, Manchu. Can you rephrase it, please? Rad, it is obvious that you are not taking your medication properly due to this situation. Would you please explain to me what is most worrying you? Mm -hmm. Krishma, can you tell me? whether you have a craving for any particular food. Uh, Madhu, do you think it, is there any relationship between your condition and fatigue? Yeah. So the connection, establishing whether the patient is aware of the connection between the two. Patients could think that this is another problem unrelated to the existing comorbidities. Chin, I appreciate you, you allow us to check your vital centers. Have you heard of diabetes and hypertension before? Yeah, yeah. But remember, the patient is already diabetic and hypertensive. Sindhu Jacob, could you please tell me what was your last test results? Yes. And perhaps Sindhu would like to ask more about that, I guess. Um, Sini, do you ever experience any excessive thirst? 
uh, or bounding pulse. Okay, Athira, do you have any idea about why you're feeling so strange? When it's as if uh, he or she has family history of, or ask if they have a family history of diabetes or hypertension. Brilliant. Chavi, do you have a family history of diabetes and hypertension? Are you aware about these conditions? Right. Um, I'm ignoring uh, some of you not being, uh, you know, uh, concentrate of the uh, the nuances of this role play card. And it's my fault. I didn't give you enough time to read the role play card, though. Mike, how much are these exams and how? And we are, oh, sorry, Mike. Uh, could you please uh, be in touch with OET's help desk? Um, or you can go to OET's official website, occupationalenglishtest.org. Uh, Ren Simol, do you know about your diabetes and hypertension? How much control? Um, OK. Madhu, have you been able to treat for diabetes and hypertension with the current situation? Vani, upon checking your vital signs and some tests, it reveals that you have you are hypertensive and diabetes. Do you have any idea about hypertension and diabetes? Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, the last practice bit for you for the day is further down. Um, I guess it's the fifth bullet point. Um, persuade the patient to be compliant with medication advice and Im improving dietary intake. So five smaller meals, more fruit and vegetables, reduce packaged or canned food, higher sugar, salt content. All right. So how do you pause and encourage the patient's response? Because this could be a, a, a pitfall where, you know, you get into the train of information giving and a wall of information. So how will you um, make it uh, better? The, the avoiding that long train of information, pausing and uh, inviting the patient's response. How would you do that? Think of uh, different ways in which, uh, you know, I don't want you to, perhaps it's, it's a bit too much for you to comment on, um, but I want you to think of it, be aware of it, because this would, uh, Side says, do you want to live more? It's a little bit intimidating, I'm afraid. Um, I guess you shouldn't be so blunt, Side. Can you make it softer? Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, you could say uh, proper management of these conditions uh, should promote, uh, you know, health, better health and longevity. Mm. Okay, so think of... Um, so this example I've used because there are examples in it and uh, examples can be used, but make sure you avoid the trap of not pausing, not inviting the patient's response. Um, so if you've got any questions for me on OET speaking, OET preparation, I'd be happy to take on a, a few questions if you have any and uh, so thank you for joining this session from IRS group. IRS group offers a great deal of online training. And we are one of the premium preparation providers and all staff providers. So any candidate interested in online preparation with us, you can be in touch with us. We have our phone numbers on the screen as well. Uh, so we are based in India, Kerala. Uh, but we have candidates from across the globe as well. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, uh, for joining for this live session. And um, I hope these techniques will help you in your OET preparation. Um, and uh, I'll see you on the other side of another session very soon with more on clinical communication. Thank you very much for joining and have a good day, everyone, or good night, everyone. Uh, and hats off to the great job that 
all of you do during this pandemic. Thank you.